Hey everyone, I'm Paul and today I'm going to tell you a story about my 2017 Hyundai Tucson. If you also have a Tucson or any newer car with gasoline direct injection, listen up. The information in this video might save your engine from blowing up. Okay, let's dive in and see what's going on. This car has the 1.6 liter turbo GDI engine. Hyundai named this engine Gamma. It puts out 175 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque and is rated for 24 miles per gallon city and 28 on the highway. The air comes in here, goes through the air box and filter, and into a small turbocharger behind the engine. It starts to build boost at 2500 RPM and the engine has a lot of low-end torque. The pressurized air goes through a front-mounted intercooler, then into a plastic intake manifold. This engine is lightweight and small, and there's a lot of room to work around it. I bought my Tucson with only 24,000 miles on the odometer, and this is the newest car I've ever had. I was excited to see how good my almost brand new modern engine is. I've heard a lot of talk about synthetic oil and 6,000 mile oil changes, so I changed my oil and sent a sample into Blackstone Labs for analysis. The regular oil test cost $35. For an extra $10, you get the TBN test that tells you how many additives are left in the oil and how many miles you can go on an oil change. Did I mention the car is basically new? I'm expecting perfect results. When I changed my oil, the car had 26,635 miles on it and the oil had been in there for 3,635 miles. That's a normal oil change interval. Here's what Blackstone Labs said about my oil. Fuel contamination measured 5.8%, which is enough to show an issue. It thinned the viscosity significantly, and we'd keep oil change intervals to 1,000 miles or less until it's no longer an ongoing concern. On the bright side, fuel doesn't appear to have caused any serious wear-related issues. Wear metals are similar to what universal averages show is typical for the 1.6 liter gamma turbo after 4,600 miles, which indicated appropriate levels of component wear. A TBN of 3.7 means the oil had active additive remaining. A value of 1.0 is low. Check back to monitor fuel. Okay, I was definitely surprised to find out my new car failed the test badly. 1,000 mile oil changes? What the hell? The lab said the maximum amount of fuel contamination is 2%. When more than 2% of your oil is just gasoline, the oil thins out too much and can't protect the bearings and piston rings from wear. Driving with contaminated oil will destroy your engine really quickly. The lab said 1,000 mile oil changes, but technically my oil will be 2% gas at 1,253 miles. How does a bunch of gas even get in the oil? One of the ways is called blow-by. A little bit of fuel can get past the piston rings into the crankcase. The positive crankcase ventilation system works to relieve crankcase pressure and remove fuel vapors from the oil. So the first thing I did was clean my PCV valve. It's right here on the valve cover. The PCV valve is a one-way check valve that allows vapors out of the crankcase, but turbo pressure from the intake won't go into the valve cover. With a clean PCV valve, I hoped my fuel contamination would go away, but I still followed the lab's recommendation and only drove my car 1,019 miles and changed my oil. This time, the fuel contamination was 1.8%. That means I can go 1,132 miles before it reaches the limit and I start damaging my engine. That's slightly worse than the previous oil test. With two lab reports in hand, I headed to my local Hyundai dealer to have them fix my car. Since it was only 4 years old with 28,000 miles, the repairs were covered under the powertrain warranty. The dealer replaced the high pressure fuel pump. What does that mean? Normal engines spray fuel behind the intake valve while the piston is moving down during the intake stroke. The engine sucks the air and fuel mixture into the cylinder and it works just fine with 60 psi of fuel pressure. With GDI, fuel is sprayed directly into the combustion chamber during the compression stroke. The cylinder is under pressure at this point, so 2,000 psi of fuel pressure is needed to get the gas to spray properly. Cars with GDI have two fuel pumps instead of just one. You'll have a normal fuel pump in the gas tank and a high pressure pump located on top of the engine. The high pressure fuel pump is driven by the camshaft. 
Gas comes in at about 60 PSI, then gets bumped up to 2000 PSI by the pump. That's a lot of pressure. It's very easy for that high pressure gas to leak down into the valve cover and into the engine oil. And here's my high pressure fuel pump. That's what the dealer replaced. They also changed out my ABS fuse so my car won't randomly catch on fire. It's a recall, no big deal. Oh, and sometimes the doors might not open because the latches are made from a thousand pieces of plastic. They replaced my left rear door latch for free. Just hope you don't encounter those two problems on the road. Cars on fire and you can't get out makes for a bad day. If you own a Hyundai Tucson, check to make sure they did the ABS fuse recall. Also, you get a 10 year warranty on those door latches. All right, so theoretically my car is fixed now. I drove it around a bit and brought it back to the dealer for my 30,000 mile service. They changed most of the fluids and did a GDI cleaning. Let's talk about that for a minute. With GDI, gasoline is directly injected into the cylinder on the compression stroke. The only thing going past the intake valve is fresh air. Or is it? The positive crankcase ventilation system routes vapors and oil from the crankcase into the intake manifold. That oil goes past the intake valve and some of it sticks to the valve. The exhaust gas recirculation system routes some of the burnt exhaust gas back into the intake to reduce combustion chamber temperature. This prevents the nitrogen in the cylinder from reacting and creating oxides of nitrogen emissions. Exhaust gas contains burnt carbon or soot. Some of it sticks to the intake valve too. Now we have an intake valve with a bunch of oil and carbon stuck to it and it needs to be cleaned off to prevent damage to the engine. In a normal engine, the fuel injector sprays gas over the back of the intake valve, constantly washing it off. Port fuel injected cars don't need GDI cleaning service. Anyway, back to the oil tests. My car is all fixed up and the intake valves are clean, supposedly, after the dealer sprayed chemicals on them. I drove 1,728 miles and changed the oil. This time, my fuel contamination is 1%. That's acceptable. If I keep driving until the oil reaches the 2% limit, I can go 3, 4, 5, 6 miles. Weird number. Is the simulation messing with me? I did another test after driving 2,643 miles and got 1.8% contamination. That means I can do 2,936 mile oil changes without damaging my engine. Based on these lab results, I can expect my Tucson not to get excessive engine wear as long as I stick to 3,000 mile oil changes and never go over that. I will also need to keep sending oil samples to the lab in case the high pressure fuel pump decides to leak again. I can't trust this car not to contaminate the oil. That's pretty messed up, right? I paid a lot of money for what I thought was a good car, but for some reason it identifies as a two-stroke and mixes the oil and gas together. Luckily, I sent my oil to the lab and discovered the contamination. It says right here in the owner's manual that if you have the 1.6 liter turbo GDI engine, you change the oil every 5,000 miles. My oil was bad after 1,000 miles. After I got the high pressure fuel pump replaced, my oil is bad after 3,000 miles. If I follow these recommendations, that means I'll be driving the last 2,000 miles or 40% of the time on bad oil. Hmm, what could possibly go wrong? Well, the engine will wear out prematurely, it'll start burning oil, it can start knocking or throw a rod, and it certainly won't last as long as it should. Most people don't test their oil and simply follow the manufacturer's recommendations for service. Hmm, I wonder if anyone's had their Hyundai blow up. Oh, it looks like they have. I would show you my surprised face right now, but it just wouldn't be genuine. It looks like the Hyundai Kona, the Santa Fe, and the Elantra all have oil consumption issues. Oh, and something about a class action lawsuit for the cars catching on fire. This video is titled, Kia Engine Oil Consumption Issues Causes Unknown and Solutions Unknown. Could it be the viscosity? Yes, when you get gasoline in the oil, the viscosity goes down and the engine isn't protected from wear. Jalopnik has an article about it here. Hyundai owners file a class action lawsuit over excessive oil consumption. This guy right here has a Hyundai Sonata. That's the real bad one. 
Let's look at Reddit. The 2.4 liter engine is notorious for burning oil. This guy says his Sonata uses 2 to 3 quarts every 1,000 miles. Over here, the Lemon Law Firm has more information about the lawsuit. Look at this. Hyundai should have recalled the vehicles because the engines allegedly use excessive amounts of oil, stall, and eventually fail because vehicles are equipped with defective Nu, Gamma, Theta, Lambda, and Kappa engines. That's all the engines. And this list is almost every car Hyundai and Kia have made in the last decade. Another law firm over here, Sauter Schalkopf, Hyundai and Kia engine oil consumption class action lawsuit. Here it says, It has been alleged that consumers with Hyundai and Kia vehicles are experiencing oil consumption that results in ticking sounds and possible failure of internal components. This may result in catastrophic engine failure and even stalling while driving. And it says that Hyundai dealers don't fix the cars. Here's that big list of cars, and they're saying, if you've experienced oil consumption, put your name over here and get in on this lawsuit. Luckily, I caught it early enough that my engine doesn't burn oil, but I know why. It's because of the GDI. It's because the oil gets contaminated, and if you don't change it really often, you're going to get that wear, the engine will burn oil, and it can blow up. Although none of that happened to me, I did still have to spend more money than normal on oil. Hyundai used to be known for making cheap, junky cars, and they've come a long way in making people think their cars are good quality. Having owned this Tucson for three years now, I think this is a very good car, with a few small exceptions, like it might catch on fire, start burning oil, or the engine could stop working. As long as I keep testing the oil and changing it often, I should be able to get a lot of use out of this car. And I do like the way this Tucson drives. It's smooth, it's quiet, and the interior feels luxurious. Also, I don't have enough money to buy a different car. Even if I did, most manufacturers these days use gasoline direct injected engines and the oil contamination issues plague more than just Hyundai owners. If you want the best car ever made, buy a third generation Toyota RAV4 with the 3.5 liter V6. It's new enough that it's safe and you can easily go 300,000 miles on it. Scotty Kilmer would agree. Thanks for watching and see you next time.